I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Oman Air's first class has a problem. That problem is their business class. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Muscat and welcome to a highly anticipated flight on an airline that not everyone's heard of in a class that barely anyone knows that they have. I know, it sounds sketchy, but I assure you, it's quite the experience. This flight, one way, routinely sells for between $4,900 and $5,000. If you'd like to know how I didn't pay that and see what I did pay, then be sure to check out the description below where you'll also see my next five videos in queue. The building that we're in now is the new terminal, which opened for service in 2018. Considering the country was more or less closed to all visitors from March of 2020 until August of 2021, the terminal really is just a couple of years old and is small but functional with a current capacity of 20 million passengers and a design palette that's very easy on the eyes. Oman Air is described as a premium regional boutique airline and the description fits quite well. They fly to around 50 destinations and have a world-class business class product, which I hope you'll check out for my last video. It'll give you a bit of history about the airline and also context for today's review. Now we're heading to the first class lounge, which on this day had to be opened just for me. All lounge staff were incredibly gracious and welcoming, but I did feel as if I caught them off guard. I obviously don't speak Arabic, but my guess is that someone was supposed to escort me from the arrival gate and perhaps didn't do their job. The lounge, in the context of how many people actually use it, is huge. On today's visit, the seat to passenger ratio was a cool 58 to 1. The lounge is a beautiful space. I just wish that it had some sort of use. I am impressed though with the amount of gold trim and filigree work in here without it feeling gaudy or tacky at all. It just felt like a really pleasant place to be. My connection was just about an hour and a half, so I did have to have some fast paced relaxation. So I headed straight to the dining area. As I was seated, a tray of sweets was presented and my drink order was taken. Champagne, uh, of course. I was offered Laurent Perrier or Cristal. I mean, Cristal, duh. Except around 30 seconds later, I was told that they were out. Okay, no problem. I was offered Arabic coffee and the chef came out to take my order directly. I went for a smoked salmon and prawn starter just for a quick bite since I knew plenty of food will be had on the flight and I was just told that I'd be having a free 20 minute massage after I ate. The starter was as delicious and fresh as it looks. I assumed it would be like a neck and shoulder massage, something that makes sense to do in 20 minutes, but no, it was a full on back massage, oil and all. The massage experience was the low point of the entire flight experience for me though, for two reasons. One, the masseuse knew what she was doing, but she kept trying to upsell me. Not just to buy a longer massage, but even to pay more for premium oils. It was just awkward and unnecessary. Secondly, being covered in oil 20 minutes before your flight boards just is not ideal. Of course I had a shower, but you get the point. I was escorted to the gate by a very friendly member of the lounge staff and was effectively handed over to the gate agents when I arrived. This was coordinated so that I'd be the last on board. Given how short my connection was, it made sense. As some of you may know, Oman Air, along with by this point, like half of the Middle Eastern carriers are now award partners with Air Canada's Aeroplan. I booked these tickets in the first couple of weeks that they were put up for sale. Honestly, I just wanted to book a business class ticket, but considering that having one of the legs be in first class was just 20,000 points more, it seemed way more than worth it. At the time that I booked this flight, and to my knowledge when I was actually flying in November, London was their only first class destination, 
but since then I have seen Bangkok also offered for advanced bookings. The super limited offering of their first class cabin is specifically the reason why it's known by many to be the most exclusive commercial first class on earth. I really don't want to clog up this video, but let me just remind you that this flight is 100% self-funded and unsponsored, so your support in watching, subscribing, and clicking that thumbs up button is greatly appreciated. As we get ready to board, let's take a look at today's flight stats. We'd push back just two minutes behind schedule and would end up in London 34 minutes early after our seven hours and 23 minutes in the air, which was too short. Our aircraft today is a four-year-old 787-9, the youngest in their fleet, and one of only two which has a first-class cabin installed in it. As I boarded, I was given a warm but brief greeting by name by the purser and found my seat, one kilo, in my own private cabin. I don't mean my own private seat, I, I mean the entire cabin. Before I get into that, let's go into the graphics. With, let's count them, two rows, there are a total of eight first-class suites in a one-to-one -one configuration, which is a sizable chunk of real estate on this plane. To put it into perspective, these eight suites take up the space of six of their business-class seats plus 26 economy-class seats. This aircraft has a net 24 seats less than the exact same model that I flew from Bangkok on. As you'd expect, the seat measurements are generous in every direction but would you be surprised to know that the business class bed is actually longer? I'm sure many of you are familiar with him, but Jeb Brooks is an aviation content creator that I have a lot of respect for and have been watching his videos for years. I've always been struck by the fact that in almost every premium product video, he would stop and express his gratitude for being able to have the experience that he was documenting. And in trying to put to words, what it feels like to be alone in this first class, I'm left not with words, but with that genuine gratitude for being able to have the experience. Because let's be real, the amount of food, wine, and just space on this plane, just for me, it's silly. And there's really no way to quantify what that feels like. Very soon, the service would begin with a cold towel and my first of many glasses of Piper Heidsick Rare which goes for $165 a bottle. And I do need to compliment the captain for parking the plane in such a way and the cabin crew for placing the glass in such a way that the champagne was perfectly backlit. Let's explore the seat. I'm sorry, the suite. To the front, under the screen is a chilled beverage cooler. We all know that these are gimmicky across the board in suites these days, but I'm just wondering if, if they could be used better. For example, if and when you book a first class ticket, ask the passenger what they would actually like in there. Same could be said with the snack basket that you'll see later. The ottoman has a seat belt so it can be used to dine with a companion if you'd like. Underneath is storage which is filled to the brim with things. For the seat controls, there were a few tactile buttons laid out for some basic features, as well as a touch panel for the finer details and controls of the suite. While there are no overhead vents, there, there was no overhead anything actually, the first class cabin doesn't have storage bins, each seat did have a thoughtful air vent and reading light integrated into the wall of the suite. The suite as a whole is full of premium finishes as you'd expect but I'd say that this goes just a smidge further with details like Alcantara lining.
Integrated into the seat wall is a mini closet, good enough for hanging an item or two. Next to your arm, you'll find two hidden doors, both wrapped in beautiful chocolate brown leather. Under the first one, we have the IFE remote, which is the latest generation and very responsive. As we were preparing for pushback, dates and Arabic coffee was passed out through the first and business class cabins. When flying on Middle Eastern carriers, Arabic coffee is a standard thing in premium cabins, but I find it rarely tastes like more than a weak cardamom tea. Oman Airs, though, was the most enjoyable that I've had, on both flights and in the lounge. I'm curious if there's something special about the Omani recipe that's different, or if this was just by chance. The other cubby near me was a storage compartment lined with a striking turquoise Alcantara. There was also a universal outlet inside. Last for storage, we have a small open recessed area which turned out to be custom sized for my flight go kit. It was time for pushback and it was turning out to be a beautiful day in Muscat. And I know I can't wear them on every flight, but yes, I did make a point of making sure that I'd be in flip-flops for the channel's first first-class flight. After all, it's not 1959 anymore. We were passed up for takeoff by a pair of company 737s, and then it was our turn for a beautiful takeoff over the city. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up now. Service is going to begin shortly, so let's quickly take a look at the rest of the amenities. First off, we need to deploy the ginormous table, which certainly is large enough for two to dine on. The headphones were comfortable and of a really pretty good quality considering they're unbranded and they were definitely a step up from those offered in business class. The amenity kit was by Amouage, and is certainly one of the nicer ones that I've received in a while. It was filled with lotion, lip balm, alcohol wipes, and a few other basics. Not overflowing with goodies per se, but it was all very nice quality. The interior of the bag was also pretty eye-catching. Lastly, we had the pajamas. They were pretty high quality and had a full zip top, standard bottoms, and some comfortable looking slippers, but they were on the small side. The pillow was not as firm as I'd prefer, but was definitely luxurious. More on the bedding later. Last up was a free Wi-Fi code for three hours of access, which was limited though to 100 megabytes. Just give first class guests unlimited data. Airlines that cap it just look cheap. All right, time for the good stuff. First up, we had a marinated lobster amuse with tapenade in a lime vinaigrette. I'm always a bit dubious about lobster that was cooked well in advance, but this was firmly tender, if that's a thing, 
and bursting with flavor. Here's the full menu. Everything is a la carte and dine on demand, a concept which also extends to business class. I know some are going to disagree with me here, but I was happy to see a menu that balanced things that were clearly just for first class, along with some other dishes that were clearly to be also served in business class, as a way to reduce waste. And then we have the wine menu. The red price tags represent current US prices for the selections. My table was set with familiar but distinctly first-class serveware. In business class, the beautiful mountain motif is etched into the plates, and in first class, it's gold overlay. And this will be perhaps where I start to talk about the worst thing about Oman Air's first class being business class. When business class offers full dine-on-demand on similar beautiful china, the lines between the classes just begin to blur a bit. I think Oman Air's first class suffers from the same problems as Qatar's first class. Both of their first classes are, are great products, though I do think Oman Air's hard product is a little bit better. But there's just not enough distinction between their incredible business classes and first class. Except perhaps the caviar service, which was obviously not available in business. I have witnessed a many reviewers and creators enjoy caviar service in every first class that exists. And I have to say, Oman's offering is up there with the best, if not one of the best that I've seen. The Ocetra caviar was served with a mother of pearl spoon, buckwheat, bellinis, and all of the accompaniments, including chopped capers, which I thought was a nice addition. It was all served along with a properly chilled shot of Grey Goose. Following that, I had the lamb sambusa, chicken kebab, cheese fatier, and chickpea salsa, served with lebne, roasted carrots, and beets. Everything was cooked very well and delicately spiced. Leading into the main dish, I again managed to select the cheapest bottle on the menu. What can I say? I have an eye for value. Leading into my last dish for now, I chose the Omani seasonal fish, which was grilled fish, prawns, za'atar chicken kebabs with spiced tomato sauce, herb crushed potato, roasted peppers, eggplant, and onion. Of the dining on board, this was the relatively speaking low point for me, specifically because of the tomato sauce. It was just far too sweet in a canned sauce kind of way and just threw off what would otherwise be a perfectly tasty dish. All right, so no matter how long this video is, there will never be enough time to speak about how good the service was. Beyond having the personal attention of the purser throughout the flight, I also had interactions and conversations with two other of the crew that were supporting my cabin. That sounds weird to say. This was world-class service, and the effortless but warm hospitality clearly came from not just spot-on training, but an obviously critical eye when choosing who works for the airline. The purser was kind enough to share with me the names of the crew that were taking care of me on this flight, as well as research all of the names of the crew that helped me on my previous flight, as we were talking about how good it was. If someone from Oman Air is watching, I'd be more than happy to have a chat about these incredible crew. My email's on the about page. I think that this will get them the recognition they deserve, as opposed to just sending an email to a generic customer service account. As we were flying over southern Turkey, I went to check out the bathroom. I suppose I have seven towels, one for each hour of the flight. The bathroom was stocked with more amouage products and was again delightfully hands-free and of course spotless. For those of you that enjoy a satisfying peel, let me share with you one unexpected perk of flying on an infrequently used cabin. After the meal service, a snack basket was brought out. I wonder if this was inspired by any other airlines. For me though, it was just time to transition to Rosé. While I certainly was not going to waste my time on board sleeping, I did ask the crew if they'd be so kind to make up the bed behind me so I could show it to all of you.
It's just about as close as you're going to get to a proper bed in first class, with the exception of perhaps Singapore and Etihad. In addition to the mattress pad and a very comfortable duvet, there were also two oversized pillows to make for a very comfortable slumber. Now, it's, it's certainly no secret that this is my first first class video on the channel, and I do my best and really want to present it to you in the context of other first class products. So that's why I'm investing pretty heavily this year in making sure that I get a variety of first class products on the channel. So far, I have four carriers booked for sure. All right, one final note about the bed. Okay, please raise your hand if you saw my last Oman Air business class video. Okay. Do you remember how many Dreamliner windows long the bed was? Correct, four and a half. Take a look here. Let's call this three and a half. By no means is this me criticizing the first class bed. It's pretty long, but rather me emphasizing how incredible the business class bed is. For a bit more privacy, there is a pair of doors which can be closed, which I suppose would be useful if the cabin was full. And before I forget, you can take a look here at the number of films on offer and the regions that they're from. All right, let's head into my second meal. Let's call it a large snack. To start off, I went with the smoked mackerel, which was head over heels good. It was served with saffron potato salad, pickled onion, orange, celery, pea shoots, and an herbed oil. A couple extra bonus points for a very beautiful presentation. And to round out the phenomenal meal service, I went with the fig and berry slice with vanilla sauce. It was delicious, but I think Oman Air needs to rethink their whipped cream application, which on my last flight and this one was just a wee bit unappetizing. Seven hours in, and we were in our descent to London's Heathrow Airport to the west of the city. It was an incredible crisp and clear night, so please enjoy the view. From the Tower Bridge to Buckingham Palace, this approach had it all. We had an uneventful taxi to the gate and parked next to, well, an old acquaintance. So as we head into the flip-flop score, what's the conclusion? It is a competitive first-class product, for sure, with a decent wine selection, and I was happy to see quite a few local options on the menu. The service was poised, warm and conversational. The transit experience in Muscat was easy, but the lounge experience was a mixed bag, partly due to my own short layover. I'd certainly be happy to spend a few more hours there though. So the final question is, is Oman Air's first class worth it? My answer is no, but it's not that it's not worth it, it's just that it's not necessary. Even one of my crew, when I was speaking to them about the empty first class cabin, jokingly mentioned that their business class food is just too good. I see a lot of truth in that, so I'm not at all knocking their first class offering. Rather, I'm leaning into my praise of their business class experience that they create. All of that said though, it's certainly a flight to remember. I do really, really hope that you enjoyed this video and will consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any of my 70 trip reports that are planned for the coming year. I'll see you next time at the Hotel Indigo, Kensington.